Hello everyone. This time around I want to talk a little bit about something that's uh, come up quite a lot in YouTube videos over the past year or so. And that's the uh, videos that are titled something like N questions X half for Y where N is some number of questions, whatever random number they manage to come up with. X is a group of people with some sort of agenda against group Y. And Y is some identifiable group of people that's presumably got some opposition to group X. Now, these videos, if they were just honest questions that X had for Y, they wouldn't be a problem. Uh, if they were actually honest questions for, by people who really wanted an honest answer, these videos would be perfectly fine and there wouldn't be any issues having them up there and they'd get answers and, and there wouldn't be any issues with the answers. The problem is most of these videos and every single one of them I've seen are clearly agenda driven and they're designed specifically for people to watch them, not think critically about them and definitely for group Y not to answer them. Now, the big thing in these, these videos is the questions themselves will be leading. So they'll lead to a particular type of response. Or they'll make implications about group Y that may or may not be true, but which have to be assumed to answer the actual question. The questions of the form of, why do you blah? where blah is something that group Y, in the eyes of group X, presumably does. Yet, they don't show any evidence that this is a general thing. There's no evidence at all. That's one of the other uh, uh, hallmarks of these types of videos. There's no evidence of any of these claims they imply in the questions. And they certainly are not expecting, uh, in response to why do you blah, they're not expecting an answer like, I don't blah, uh, which is almost always the actual answer that group Y will have for that type of question. Because the question is suggesting that group Y does blah, as it's actually outright saying that if there's no actual response there. Yet, uh, almost certainly that blah is something group X hopes that group Y does and will admit to because it makes group Y look bad. The other thing is the, uh, the question that makes assumptions but doesn't really permit an answer that contradicts those assumptions. And that's along the lines of your basic yes and no question, uh, are you still beating your wife? That's an example of that type of question. Are you still beating your wife, yes or no? If you're smart and someone asks you that question, you'll punch them in the nose. Um, they'll, they'll deserve it. Um, and if they're a lawyer, You'll do everything you can to get them disbarred, thrown in prison, whatever, so that they never practice law ever again. Because it means they're dishonest asses. But, let's look at that question. Are you still beating your wife? Now, you would think there are only two reasonable answers. Yes and no. Now, let's look at it. There are actually several potential cases. First case, you have you are married and you have a wife and you did beat your wife at some point in time. In that case, the answer would be yes, if you're being honest. You could also have you are married, right? You never beat your wife. In which case, the only obvious permissible answer is no, but that implies that you used to beat your wife because of the still in the question. The other options are you have, you were married, 
you used to beat your wife, but you're not married anymore. And, and you may or may not still be beating the poor, poor woman. In which case the answer is no, because you're not married anymore. In that case, it implies that you've stopped hurting the poor woman, even if you haven't. You could also not have ever been married, in which case the only possible answer is no, but it, that implies that both you have been and are married and that you are, have been and you, you beating your wife and you have therefore stopped. Um, or you weren't married and you've got married now and you're not beating your wife or a whole bunch of permutations of that where you've got not married in there. Uh, or you've got the case where you were married and you never beat your wife and you still don't, in which case all of those versions have to be answered with no. But those all imply that you're a bad actor, that you beat your wife, that you were married and beat your wife. That it implies things. And if you're not paying close enough attention when you answer that question, are you still beating your wife, your snap answer is probably going to be no. And it'll technically be correct, but it will imply that you used to beat your wife. And you, you need to be wary of this kind of trap in a question, because that's what it is. It's designed to trap you with a, you give a correct response and it implies things. Um, and quite frankly, if such a thing ever comes up in an actual trial, in a court of law, or in a police interrogation, or anything where lo the law is involved, any charges should be dismissed with prejudice so they can never be brought again just to punish the authorities. Because it's just not fair. Now, a large number of the questions in these end questions videos will be of this form where if you, to answer it correctly, you have to refute the assumptions in the question, not answer the question itself. And then you'll take criticism for not answering the question itself. Yet, to answer correctly, you have to state that the question itself is wrong. Uh, and this is the structure of these end questions videos. There's a lot of them out there, and they, they're all set up with leading questions, question, you know, which invite a certain type of response, which implies a certain type of thing. Or they, they're traps, like the beating your wife question, or they just, autom they just assume that something is true and ask why you do it. Uh, and... Uh, that's basically the setup of most of these questions. Some of the questions are incoherent and impossible to answer. Uh, some of them are statements and aren't really questions. And those are the most honest parts of those videos because it reveals the agenda directly uh, without coaching it in the form of a question. Now, I'm not saying necessarily that group X is always wrong, group Y is always right. What I am saying is that these videos themselves are dishonest. That's, they're just straight up dishonest. They're specifically designed to leave an impression on the viewer that a certain set of facts is true without actually stating those facts plainly and without actually providing any evidence that they are in fact facts. And most of the time they're just assertions and uh, they have nothing to back them up at all except personal belief or that somebody else has made the same assertion. There's no rigor to the questions. There's no honesty to them. They're clearly designed for an agenda. And it works very well with the majority of viewers who don't think when they hear something. The majority of people just don't think. And that includes you, my viewers. The majority of you don't think when you hear something. Uh, and that is unfortunate. That's human nature. We make assumptions and we assume that things are true when, in, in, when we hear them. This is why lying is so effective. 
And that's essentially what these videos are, is they're a convoluted way to lie. Now, politicians have been using this type of nonsense for millennia. Lawyers use it all the time. And that's why I assert that lawyers that do this sort of dishonesty should be barred from practicing law permanently on one offense. And if we did that, there'd be a lot less trouble from things like courts and so on. Uh, and there'd probably be less trouble with uh, police interrogations if that sort of thing would get uh, the entire case thrown out. But that's not going to happen, and maybe I'm being a little bit harsh on, the, on these people, but they, if they have a position of authority and they're doing this type of shenanigan, they shouldn't have a position of authority. Maybe it's one strike and then you're out if you do it again. Maybe not, but uh, certainly these people putting up these uh, disingenuous question videos deserve some sort of a beatdown. Now, they do get that beatdown quite a lot. Oftentimes, um, big name members of Community Y will take these question videos and they'll actually answer them. They'll take the question, uh, what they'll do is they'll take a clip of the question and then they'll give you their answer. Then they'll take a, the clip of the next question and then they'll give their answer. They'll, t you know, they'll actually put answers in and they will demolish the assertions in the question. They will demolish the assumptions the questions make. They will demolish the trap questions as traps. They will turn questions back on the asker when they, they uh, are questions that are more generic and could apply to any group of people, members of any group. They'll actually answer them. And if you watch these, these uh, videos with the answers, and if they're done by somebody who's particularly careful in how they do their answers, then it makes the, the askers look like it, the idiots they are. And... Quite frankly, we need more of those types of competent responses to these idiotic question videos. Unfortunately, a lot of the responses are no more competent than the question videos, and oftentimes the responses are just as disingenuous as the questions themselves. So you've got to be careful when you're doing that. Now... It irks me when I see these types of videos because I know they're going to get the views and the people posting them, they may not believe the drivel they're putting into them either. Either They're putting them up because they get the views and therefore on their monetized channels, they get income. So it's in their best interest to put clickbaity stuff in there like that, which, does, which can be defended in some way as a reasonable title and then get people to watch the questions and whether they're, they're people going, oh my, that's horrid questioning. Those are leading questions, that's terrible. Or it's people going, uh-huh, yep, I always knew that. The people who agree, the people who disagree. Either group, those are videos, the views, and therefore ads being shown and therefore potential income for the person posting the video. So they don't have to necessarily agree. And some of the response videos are in the same vein. They're set up exactly that way to, uh, to get the views. So uh, we need good response videos to these types of things, but we need to avoid videos that fall into the same traps. Now, I'm thinking that I might in the future do a few of response videos for these types of things when they come up and and see what uh, what comes of it. Uh, it, it seems that uh, if I'm a, a viable member of Group Y, then why not do a response and say, well, this is ridiculous. Or uh, maybe I'm not a member of the intended group. I might just demolish the questions anyway. Maybe. Maybe not. It depends. Uh, it depends what comes up, what topics come up, and, and whether I run into these things in a reasonable time frame from when they go up.
and also whether I want to put the bother into actually editing something like that. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, basically, I have a recommendation out of this, and that is if you run into a video on YouTube that has a title like N Questions X Have for Y, you can probably just give it a complete miss. Don't bother watching it. It's unless you want to either get frustrated or uh, listen to propaganda being uh, pushed by Group X, you probably don't want to watch that video. And if you don't watch it, and if people just don't watch those, they don't get the views and it'll be less incentive for people to put them up. If you do see a response video for one of those, it might be worth watching it just to see if the responder has done a credible job of answering things. But, again, there's not a lot of percentage in watching these. Uh, that said, they're often much more entertaining than the question videos themselves, even if the responder makes a total ass of themselves, and then you can laugh at both sides. So, in general, if you're going to pick one or the other, watch a response video, not the original. Because the originals don't deserve the views. That's really what it comes down to. Anyway, uh, that's all I have on this topic for now. If you want to be notified of future videos, make sure to subscribe. And if you've watched this long, thanks for watching.